There we go. See, it almost sounds like it's related to English. <laughs> Soup. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's not. That was not where my inspiration came from at all. I was trying to like immerse myself into the, you know, You're the You're trying to commune on like the, the level of the platonic idea of, of soup. Yeah, I tried to VR soup. YouTube, welcome back. We have Quain here. Quain is here. Say hi, Quain. Hello, YouTube. And we're about to jump right back into our tonal extravaganza. So let's let's do it. Let's scoot over to the side webcam. What's happened so far? A little recap. We have uh, we've made this this little sketch of a language so far. It has uh, well, it has the constant system you can see on screen, the vowel system you can see just below it, and it has um, we we contrast six tonal categories. We have a high level tone, a mid level tone, a low level tone. We have a high falling tone. We have a, a what do we want to call this? A low falling tone, a mid falling tone. Yeah. A uh, low falling tone. A low yeah, falling basically. tone. And then we have a rising tone. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time to make some words. We have a few. We have actually a couple, two words. Um, we have quat, which is the name of the language. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of want a uh, yar to be a greeting, actually. Okay, this is a greeting. Yeah, so I can I can say yar YouTube instead of hello. Yar. Okay. Well. Yeah. I think we need to figure out what tones these. Uh, these oh words yeah. Have. Yeah, because so far we are like inherently pronouncing it as a falling tone because yeah. that's what English does. Exactly. Right? So, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so then is it just a matter of picking a tone out of a hat? Hmm, yeah, just feels, vibes, you know. All right, what vibes are you getting for uh, for our greeting word? I'll just try and say it neutrally. Yar. Try and just Yar. three that. Yeah, I, I will have a three three if you don't mind. I don't mind. Yeah. Three three? Yeah. Yar. Pretty casual. Yeah. All right. And then the name of the language, we have to assign a tone to this. Okay. That should be something fancy. So uh, either falling or rising. You pick. Mm, rising. Rising. Okay. So <gasps> quad, quad is the name of the language. Yeah. Okay. Quad. All right. So then maybe we should make a, a little slight teensy weensy decision about basic word order uh, so that we can uh, make, a, make a sentence and see what happens when tones collide. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we have the name of the language of a greeting. We don't really have much else. Let's let's do a few words and then think about word order. So let's get some yeah. some of the core words that any language needs. Oh, dear. Yeah. Of course. Right. Um, oh, and uh maybe eat yeah, well, some other, yeah that'll give us enough to make a few sentences oh yeah the the owl uh eats the stew the owl example. eats the stew yeah. the chicken eats the soup yeah all right i think that's good so um let's let's go let's make some let's make some words i think we should make owl and chicken um a little bit iconic yeah, because um, it's always Are we fun. continuing the the quack theme. Oh, I think so. I think we should. You know, we don't have to make it exactly the same as the yeah. Sakrat language word, but I think we should have um, okay. something can... that sounds chickeny. Something that sounds yeah. Um, maybe something like hmm, something like key. Uh, or, I don't know, what is it? I haven't heard chickens lately. All I can think of are the, the chicken noises on Arrested Development. I don't know. I don't know if that's a reference anyone will get. Um, but there's a, lot of, there's a lot of imitating of chickens in very, very inaccurate ways on that show. Hmm. Well, I think owl should be something like hoot or hot. Oh, yeah, that's pretty iconic. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Hot. Hot. Um, okay. And chicken. So, hmm. Oh, 
oh, I, I think I've made a, an assumption here. And I don't know if it's a good one. Maybe it's something we should talk about is I just made everything one syllable. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I've seen some two syllable uh, suggestions, actually. But, so maybe uh, we should put some of those in. Yeah. I saw chicken as mbiki. Someone suggested that. Biki? Or mbiki? Mbiki. Oh, yeah. We, we didn't uh, actually decide our, well, our uh, allophonic rules. Okay, we should do so, that then. I think basically yeah. nasals in coda, um, pre-nasal I stop is um, onset. Uh, yeah, yeah. What do you think sense. about that? Yeah, that's the most logical and easy. Okay, solution. so, so yeah. we have mb mm. mbiki like that. Yeah. And what kind of tones do we need? So if yeah, so mbiki that could work. Mbiki. So, yeah. Just like yeah, mbiki. So Which, five five yeah, one so, one is that? Am I yeah, perceiving those correctly? Um, yeah 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 yeah. Mbiki. All right, we got some good stuff from the chat coming in. Um, oh yeah. Uh, echoed word says oh, yeah. for or rather um, for stew. Three one. Flute. Hmm. Is flute sounding more like stew or stew? That's a question. Oh, this is going to be controversial. Hmm. <laughs> Echoed words has put it in for for stew, so I think we should. Uh, I okay. think we should go along yeah. with that. Yeah, I can. Uh, if I twist my mind a bit, I can get behind that. But <laughs> I'm a stew person, you know. Well, yeah. I think. Well, then make the then make the word for soup be something even more glorious than. Shu. Okay. I think you're just basically envious of the awesome word we have for stew. Oh yes, very. So. Um, it should have um, soup. Maybe also with yu then. Um, let's see. Hu. Like the sh. Su. Su. Is that it? Yeah. Sounds. S h y five five. There we go. Su. It almost sounds like it's related to English. <laughs> soup. Oh, it's, yeah, it's not, but. Yeah, that, that was not my inspiration. Where my inspiration came from, at all. It, it was just yeah, soup is. I I was trying to like immerse myself into the, you know. The You're trying to commune on like the the level of the Platonic idea of of soup. Yeah, I tried to VR soup like, just in that moment. But, yeah. All right. Um, Galactic Sand is suggesting something like nyam for eat. Yeah. That works like what? a lot, uh, just a lot of nasals in general for eat because I, that sounds yeah. like eating. Yeah. Um, tone. What tone? Uh, yeah. Keep in mind uh, that you know, as we're we're about to yeah. do some fun with Sunday, and you are going to have five five and three one after it. If you're interested in showing anything, you may want to consider that and the tone that you that you add to nyam. Yeah, but we can twitch about uh, with the like uh, Sunday rules, right? So mm -hmm. if like we we feel like this word needs some spiciness, we can just add it. We can also add a second syllable to it. Yeah. Uh, so Galactic Sand said uh, one one. All right. Yum. Then one one it shall be. Okay, so we have we have. A bunch of words here we need to make a little sentence i think mm -hmm. um and if we're going to make a sentence we need a basic word order now i do not know that there is anything at all um to say about correlations between word order and uh tone yeah it's like a correlation it's very yeah but it's an aerial feature rather than uh, uh, like fixed there's nothing related. about the nature of tone yeah, that yeah. says you no, must, no, no, no. The, the mystical forces of tone are conspiring to make you SVO. Although like most East 
and Southeast Asian, uh, East Asian tonal languages happen to be SVO, but that's like that's just coincidence in my opinion. I think we should um, we should look at walls just briefly here to show oh, yeah. um, we what can. we mean about the aerial nature of, of tone. Mm -hmm. So let's go find tone. Okay. So we are now looking at a map of the world um, where we have three values of the uh, four tone as they're um, coded in walls. White is no tone. Uh, pink is a simple tone system and red is a complex tone system. And um, yeah, uh, how they draw the line between what's a simple and what's a complex tone system is not well, you know, it could be debated, yeah, fuzzy, you know, but, yeah. you know, I think we know the gist of what they're talking about. Um, complex, more tones, contour tones, things like that. Um, at least I think that's what they, they did in this chapter. Mm -hmm. I'd have to yeah. I'd have to refresh it, but um, I think that's the gist of it. Yeah. And so looking at this, we can see on the world map um, that tone kind of hangs out in particular areas. It hangs right. out a lot in um, Southeast Asia. And it hangs out a lot in sub-Saharan Africa. And it's here and there uh, in other parts of the world. There are some clusters in the Americas. Here and there, Central America has a little bit of a cluster. Um, and then the rest of Eurasia basically has almost nothing. No tone. Yeah, except uh, Scandinavia and Latvia. Yeah, so Nor so, well, uh, no, interestingly, yeah, Walls puts Norwegian, Walls codes Norwegian rather than Swedish. Uh, yeah. and Latvian there. Um, uh, I think Punjabi would also be there as well. Yeah, Punjabi is there, yeah. I, see um, it. I, don't, I don't see it on the, the map, but I know it, I know what's in there. Um, yeah. So yeah, tone is, is heavily associated with certain parts of the world, these kind of tonal hotspots. Uh, we talked about hotspots when we were talking about geology, but... Uh, here, here are some hotspots that I feel a little bit more comfortable talking about. Yeah, um, yeah some subduction zones. Yeah, yeah, tonal subduction. Oh, tonal subduction zones. What is that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. We can, we can actually do that, right? Okay. Just, I'm good. No, no, we're not going to do that. But, <laughs> but imagine you had like a tone system where the Sunday worked like a subduction zone where the tones came up against each other and then made one tone lift. As it went under. Oh, wouldn't that be cool? Oh, yeah, there are some. Yeah. So, are you okay. saying that tonal so, subduction so zones are real? Our rules are just subduction zones. Yeah. Like, now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Basically. Okay. All right. So let's make our. Uh, all that to say, we need to come up with the word order, um, and. Yeah. Someone stop me from making SVO. Is anyone going to stop me? I'm gonna. Yeah. Not gonna stop you, but uh, because as we always just convenient, you know, but like and it's common, so like you you can justify it easily. But like, mm, what are some of the yeah, just SOV, VSO, the like possibilities? Okay, well, we just did VSO, so why don't we do SOV? Yeah, uh, because we SOV already had tonal, sounds, yeah, we've already had a tonal yeah. language with um, VSO. V, yeah. uh, SVO, um. Me. Yeah. So, SOV. So then let's make a sentence. Owl eat soup, chicken. No, no, this is wrong. Owl eats stew, chicken eat soup. All right, this is going to be, um, we're not going to put any morphology on these uh, yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. We, we will, I think, but for now. Yeah. All right, so then let's. So then, of course, the, the free translation. Um, uh, the owl eats stew. The chicken eats soup. This is very Duolingo vibes, I have to say. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we're, we're not learning Indonesian today. Like yeah. Instead of learning Kwat. Yeah, learning Kwat. These, these are the sentences you get. So um, how are we going to say this? Okay, so uh, hold. Yeah, you can copy and paste. I'll copy and paste. Can, you speak. Yeah. <laughs> hot uh, stew, right? Hot stew. Yeah. Yum. Stew, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I, I'm having a hard time distinguishing low and low falling. Oh, my God. Um, 
Flu-flu-nyam. Yeah, that sounds more like it. Okay. So, hot flu nyam. Yeah, that's like a like a falling down sentence, basically. Yeah, hot. Yeah. Flu nyam. Yeah, falling to the ground. That's tough. And um, Vicky. Okay, Vicky. Flu nyam. Oh, <laughs> this is gonna be hard to pronounce. Oh my god. Did somebody okay. did somebody order something that would make tonal contours placed next to each other a little bit easier to pronounce? Yeah. All right. So what, Quain, do you, do you dare say the full sentence all together? And then we can go in and find the spots that we might want to introduce some mm-hmm. changes. That's my best attempt, which is not bad. That sounds really cool. Yeah. All right. So, Sunday. For those who have not encountered this word before, you may be surprised to see its spelling. Um, this is the this is alterations in sounds when they come into contact with um, uh, alterations in sounds at the edge edge of words when they come into contact with with other words. Right. Basic. Just basic. Bas- uh, yeah. Basically. Two tones coming together and they have some chemistry. Right. That's so my so originally, rigid definition. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll traffic in very very loose definitions. I think today original yeah. originally Sunday referred to um, segmental changes that occurred mm-hmm. at the at word boundaries, um, but then it got extended to refer to um, uh, Sunday of tone uh, when right. when when tones come together. So tone sandhi is what we're going to introduce now. What are some mm-hmm. types of tone sandhi that, that occur, uh, Quain? Do they generally mm, take any good. shape or, or is it basically anything goes? Yeah, that's a very raw question because uh, that's exactly my area of study, <laughs> coincidentally. But yeah, uh, so sandhi, like, I mean, you can classify them in different ways. Um, so by direction, you can come from the left. So like the leftmost thing doesn't change and um, the subsequent things change. That's called left dominant. And uh, so right dominant is obviously the opposite direction where the rightmost things uh, doesn't change. The rightmost thing, the single thing uh, doesn't change and the left, the things left of that changes. And um, Again, my dialect is being a monster here, and we have bidirectional in different contexts. So that's just ridiculous. Anyway. Do I have this right? Um, so in left dominant, if you have category A, B, that would go to category A, C. Mm-hmm. And right dominant would be A, B going to C, B. Yeah. And that C uh, is interesting because that C can be another tone in the system. But it can also be like just something else, which is very curious because like, yeah, languages do do that. They generate even more, even new tones in Sandhi context. Now, is that also true in segmental Sandhi? I'm trying to think of any examples. Oh, yeah. Um, well, like it, is consonant mutation a, a sort of a Sandhi, is it? If you sort of. Think of, I mean, yeah. it's it's like a morphologized relic of Sandy. Um, right. Yeah. But that, like, yeah, if not for them, like some phonemes just don't exist, right? I'm wondering if, because the examples of constant, so, okay, take constant mutation to the side. I'm wondering if there is a, if it's true that segmental Sandy mm-hmm. creates segments that are not otherwise found in the inventory. I actually don't yeah. know the answer to I that don't know, question. Actually. Yeah. Because if that's the if, case, then that would be a major difference between tone Sunday and, and other kinds of Sunday. Hmm. We, we don't care about that today, but that's that's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, that is interesting because, uh, okay, I'm going academic right now. So Kipaski have a, have a pa- uh, has a paper about, like, um, so structural um, changing uh, structure changing versus structure preserving uh, phonological changes. Yeah. So 
if yeah, if、uh, the C is a tone in the in the original system, it、um, it should be structure preserving because you are preserving the structure by just shifting、um, your tone into another tone. But、um, if you're creating a new thing, your structure changing. So. That's a very interesting distinction, and apparently languages can do both、uh, with regards to tone. So, yeah, that's an interesting that's an interesting kind of、uh, distinction that I think is probably not that widely known outside of、um, outside of like phonological theory. Right. Yeah. Strong structure preserving and non structure preserving、um, operations. Cool. Anyway, um, that aside,、um, yeah. So, so that aside, that is, yeah. That aside,、um, okay. So yeah, basically, like you can sandy to whatever. There's literally no rules. Of, I mean, cross linguistically, there's virtually no rules of like governing which can be sandied and which can not be, and the sandy the. A、uh, product like there's also just like no rules about like what they can be. So basically, we can go free is what I'm saying. Are there tendencies regarding what kinds of things are subject to sandy? For example, do things generally become more like each other or less like each other? Is there assimilation、Both、and dissimilation, like there is、Both、in segmental? Are, yeah. Both are very apple. Like I can. Just like yeah, quote examples of those. So, like some languages, it depends on you know the the phonological like quirks. Like some languages just love one thing. Like some languages have diphthongs and they just love diphthongs and triphthongs. But some languages tend to just like monophthongize them. So that that's um like you can't say which one is uh favorable, right? So、they're both、I、on the menu. That, yeah, yeah, they're both on the menu. So I, I think the、uh, tone scape is sort of similar in that way. Like, it, they're both on the menu, and depends on the, there are languages that do assimilation and and dissimilation. So, so an example of、uh, a language whose tone sandy、uh, is dissimilatory in nature would、mm-hmm. be Mandarin, right? Uh, you mean the three plus three example, right?、Mm-hmm. So the yeah. So in yeah, because they are they are too similar to each other, so that's why. So this is this、say. is kind of analogous to in segmental phonology when you have like an L and an R coming next to each other, or an L and an L coming、oh, yeah. next to each other. One might go to an R.、Mm-hmm. Um, note that they don't have to be exactly next to each other for this to for this to happen. So you、yeah. get.、Um, You know, like like in 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 Latin, you have、um, the alis、um, suffix, which if it's attached to something with an r in the root,、um, or sorry, wait, other way around.、Uh, if you attach to something with an l in the root, then you get aris. Ah,、uh, I see. Like yeah, man,、uh, the, alis. The example came to my mind is a、uh, uh, Spanish arbol, right? Right, right. So this yeah, it should be out of board instead of out of board, right? If I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, yeah. Out of board, out of board. Going to out of board. Yeah. That's a good ex-、uh, historical example of dissimilation. Whereas this is a、yeah. a synchronic example、mm-hmm. of dissimilation.、Um, okay,、yeah. cool. So there's dissimilation. There's assimilation.、Um, are there other kind of specifically tonal things like smoothing out rapid changes in direction? Yeah. So there's a general trend. Yeah, we're we're not getting into that territory today, not necessarily. But if you have an overly complex、um, tonal contour in its citation form, which is the one like just one syllable on its own, like it can pronounce,、uh, it can be pronounced as ah or ah, and these tones are just like too annoying、uh, to say it quickly, right? So, so there's, a, like, there's a constraint、yeah. that don't be annoying. <laughs> More or less. Start.、Uh, I mean, yeah, that annoying is my personal opinion. <laughs> you can have, yeah, like other takes on it. But、um, 
like they're just too um, extra. Star so, extra. So, yeah, extra. So, so like, yeah, <laughs> just don't be too extra. For example, like the citation form of Mandarin third term is ah, uh, which is like something like two one four in textbooks usually, right? And that is is a citation form which is annoying and extra. So, so it's banned by the constraint star extra star. By right. the way, Chad, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is a, this is a a constraint. Um, you know, if you are familiar with optimality theory, that you'll be laughing right now, or maybe not. Um, otherwise, <laughs> you'll just be sort of like, what are they doing? Uh, which is also fine. Uh, I'm violating star extra right now myself. So let's let's move on and actually come up with some tone sandy here. Okay. Um, all right, so yeah. I, I'll, I'm, I'm passing the mic to you here, Quain. What, what's, what's our first Tone Sunday rule? Hmm. Um, I'm going to ask you, uh, do you want to be assimilatory or dissimilatory in general? Like the tendency of the language. I am feeling contrary, so let's say dissimilatory. OK, dissimilatory, right? So we want to uh, just basically just kill all the two similar ones, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Do we have any example of, hmm, we actually, in our sentence, uh, sentence we uh, don't actually really have two of the same tones together. So that's... We don't have the same tonal categories, the same tonal contours, oh, but we do yeah, have the same that... tones, 3, 1, and okay. 1, 1. Yeah, 3, 1, and 1, 1. So, Interesting. Yeah. So if I were to go about it, I can see it turning into three three and one one to be dissimilar, right? So instead of hot yam, it would be yeah. hot yam. Okay. Hot yeah. yam. Yeah. Oh. Um, I, I, have, I have to like really go slowly. I'm like walking on a tightrope or something. Uh. Yeah. Okay, so that's something we could do. So we could do three one 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 two three three one one. I think we've mm -hmm. got some some suggestions from the chat too. Um, do you have the chat up, Queen? Do you want me to read it out? Yeah. Uh, you can read. Yeah. Okay. So I'm looking at echoed words suggestion. Uh, five one three one. Uh, go to go to five one two four. So having the. Mm. The two fallings so in yeah. in um, quick succession. Okay, so five one three one goes to uh, what's your? Okay, that goes to five one two four. You said? Yeah, that's uh, that's coming from echoed words in the chat. Okay, yeah, I like that actually. Uh, wait, so okay, so here's the thing: it's uh, turning up to be bidirectional right now. Do we want that? Okay. If you know, right? You yeah, know, this, because, yeah. This might complicate things. Right. So if, yeah, I, I think we did a, a right dominant one, right? In, um, don't remember, Sasu, maybe? Mm -hmm. I think right? so. so. I think so. I yeah. <laughs> if we can take the, um, take the um, suggestion from Echo Words and so we can change the second one. So three one 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 can turn into huh, three one three three. Is that different enough? Or here? three one three one. Three three one three one is the same ish. But it, it's it's the okay. same contour, but it's dissimilating at the boundaries. Ah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Well that can work. If, yeah, or just turning it into another two four, I'm like, I'm okay with that also. So, is it the case that you have some languages that like to just that have one kind of thing that's the target of yeah 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 multiple... like one yeah dominant like quote unquote dominant tone. So, like, for example, Cantonese just loves its rising tones, like it just turns everything into rising. So. 
So I mean, both uh three one three one and three one like something else can work two four if we like. It just depends on the aesthetic that we're going for. Okay, so let's let's try saying some different ones and seeing what we like better. Um, yeah. So we're talking about first of all five one three one going to five one two four. So hot instead of hot she we mm -hmm. have hot she yeah. A little bit of squiggle there, but the, hot shu, yeah, hot yeah. My brain is too fried to figure out whether any of this is making <laughs> sense. <laughs> okay. Um, I like the two rules that we have down here right now, mm -hmm. but I'm wondering how they yeah. interact. Because oh yeah, because we have a five one three one 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 situation, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, yeah. So based on our two rules, we can see, we can generalize, right? That our language is left dominant uh, at this point. Okay, Correct? so left dominant. Mm -hmm. So the left, so left most tone is preserved. Yeah, dominant, yeah, basically means preserved, inert to Sandy or yeah, whatever. So um, yeah, so if I want, shouldn't change in other words. Right. Right, because it's the leftmost thing. It's literally the leftmost thing. So, if Y one doesn't change, we can have the second three one triggering or not triggering. Right, if you know. Yeah. Uh, what I meant by that, so five one three one 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 can turn into five one two four one one, and um it's fine right like based on our rules because we don't have any specific rules uh regarding two four so this point. it prevents the application of the rule uh -huh. of this second rule so if we say this is rule a and this is to mm -hmm. rule b um the fact that a applies first prevents the application of b right right yeah um, that's one option so a second option is just treating like A and B as the like yeah B can wait yeah it's independent or like yeah the so three one 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 can still turn into three one three one but uh, since the first three one is already turned into two four so we have something like five one two four three one. As and the so then of you it. get this situation. So say we have this. So let's just write the tone numbers down here. So five one yeah. three one two four is. Oh, so five one three one 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 is the underlying tones, and right. then we have the option of doing five one two four one one. So this is the application mm -hmm. of rule A only. Yeah. The other option is five one three one. Um, one one going to five one two four three one, which is the yeah. application of A and B, but mm -hmm. it's a bit weird because it doesn't look like B should have applied when you only look at uh, the first two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which that, I mean, that, that yeah. happens. That happens. That's yeah. opacity, that baby. Absolutely happens because yeah, I know cases where that happened and it's fascinating, right? Because the trace, the like remnant of uh, one tone can still, like the underlying thing can still like trigger stuff. Yeah. Which is really cool. It's yeah. really cool. And it's a real, you know, for those playing along at home, that's a real challenge for, for phonologists uh, right. of, of a particular yeah, stripe anyway. Opaque. Yeah. yeah. So this it's is yeah. technically opacity. You're learning lots of fun, fun words uh, today. But I think we're coming kind of close to the end of our time. I know time right, flies yeah. and you're you're making tones. Right. I I still I I didn't have have enough. I wanted to develop this further, definitely. Yeah. But. We'll we'll get you back on. We'll develop this further. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll we'll make it. Yeah. But let, let's say goodbye to YouTube for now, and then we'll we'll hang around in the chat for a few minutes and and uh, and talk a bit with them. So hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're missing out because you know you don't get these cool little asides uh, in in the uh, interim, but. But don't feel too bad, YouTube, because you can come watch us stream uh, anytime. Just uh, you know, mm -hmm. click the old uh, bell, and it'll let you know. 
Um, but anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Quain, would you like to say a few words to YouTube by way of farewell? Liar. 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 All right. Oh, no. Liar. I pronounced that wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> liar. Uh, liar is it's the, the greeting. Right. It's the, it's the palatal lateral. Liar. Oh, no. Liar. Um, liar, YouTube. Which basically means bid eye. Uh, so we oh, will yeah. see you next time if, if you haven't had to oh. fill of our nonsense. Um, until mm -hmm. then, YouTube.